my friends, it's the Saracen Room, and today is a fun a fun day for me. I always love talking about frauds and scam artists, and today I get to bring down a Canadian legend. Um, today, I will be talking about Ed the Sock, and before I start, I just want to give a disclaimer. This is 100% my opinion. It's from the information that I have looked at and gathered and paid attention to for about a year now. Um, it is in... I'm not telling you to take my word as factual. I'm saying, listen to what I have to say and go look for yourself and see if you agree. Because in my opinion, Ed the Sock is a disgusting thief. He's a piece of garbage. He manipulated a, a group of people from their emotions uh, in a marketing scam, which, okay, that's, that's not ethical. But, like, adding with the rest of it, I do believe you committed fraud which is illegal, and as someone who I see on it on the daily talking about our Canadian politicians and saying how they're all taking bribes and, you know, it's corrupt, and I hear you talking that maybe you'll want to put your hand into the political race, that makes me a little worried because I've seen from you what a thief you are and what a scumbag you are, in my opinion, and it's my opinion you're a thief. Allegedly. But... I wanted to speak up. So Ed said about a year ago, I was on a show with him. This is how I found out. We actually never got on the show. We got stuck in the waiting room. But it was a Canadian Day special. It was like me, Ed the Sock, this guy from a Howard, that was from like the Howard Stern Network. It had like Andy Dick and High Pitch Eric and all these like all the crazy ones there. <laughs> and this guy from Lord of the Rings that built the staffs. And we're going to have like a Canadian Day special. And I went in there and I was like, hey, I was very nice when I saw it. I was like, hey, nice to meet you. You know, you're a Canadian icon because he is. Um, and to my American fans, I'll explain to you who Ed DeSalk is. He's like a triumph insult dog. But he came from where you guys have MTV. We had much music. And he was at the point on much music near the, uh, when it was like popping, you know, and music videos were really relevant. Like he was like the Pauly Shore type of like relevance in Canada. Like he was really part of that network. I won't take that away from him, but he was just a, a little sock with green hair and a cigar. He used to say rude things like Beavis and Butthead about music videos, and we would interview people. He'd ask rude questions. If you go back now and you look, it, it doesn't age well, which is weird, because during the time, it was pretty revolutionary. There wasn't a lot of people doing that, and I won't take that away from him. It doesn't take away from him being a disgusting thief, and I believe, well... Either your wife is naive, which could be possible. I don't think so. And, or she's also a thief with you. Um, and we're going to get into that. doesn't take away your disgustingness, but I don't want to you know, give a, a wrong impression of him. He's, he's definitely done a lot for the culture. And for America, too. Like, he was before Triumph the Insult Dog. He brought a lot of that edgy, like material on to TV, especially in Canadian TV. So, and so yeah, he was on the Mush Music and he would do like little beefs and butthead, like he would insult music videos. But so we're in the chat room, they're all talking, uh, the phone line I mean, and he, what's the chat? I don't remember what it was. We're in like for a radio show, like little podcast, wherever like the little waiting room thing is. I don't remember what it was, to be honest, it was like a year ago. He's talking about how he's going to start Electric Circus. I'm like, I'm thinking in my head, impossible. Okay, but that's cool. I'll be friendly. Electric Circus is like a soul train. He's talking how he's going to go bring back Fromage, which was like the Beavis and Butthead, like I was saying, where he's critiquing music videos. I know YouTube. I knew he. you can't do that. This guy's on TV. You know, his wife is in the industry. They know they can't do that either. But I'm not saying anything. I'm like, okay, you know, he's just... The guy had like a little run before, you know, he wasn't famous or anything. He had a Canadian moment, right? He's like Jim Leahy or something like it. I was like, okay, you know, this guy's deluded and he's trying to make an, another run for it. But the, he's talking like, then when he's talking to us, he's like, I can't believe I'm coming back. And people say they're excited because I said I was excited. And I could tell he's talking to me too at this point too. He's like, but they don't want to donate. It's like, motherfucker, you read the sock. Why am I going to donate to you? You haven't been relevant for fucking 20 years on like an old TV platform. But I just let it go and I'm like, oh yeah, that's crazy, being polite. So I go check out his Indiegogo, he wants $35,000. I'm like, 
I'm thinking in my head at that point too. I'm like, there's it's impossible for you to create that for thirty thousand, thirty five thousand dollars, which he hasn't. This is like a year, a year past now. Nothing has been done by Ed Desoc. He's gone on tour off of exploiting everyone for the Indiegogo and getting attention in the newspapers for that. He's very good at doing that. All smoke and mirrors around that scumbag. I'll get into it some more. But nothing has been created by him. I'm like, how is he going to do that for $35,000? He got $30,000 of the goal. And, but when he was talking about that to me, like in that room, I, you, I could tell the desperation. This is a man that needs money. As someone who's been online and done a lot of shows and, you know, I've met people that have been popping many times. A lot of them get cash strapped and they really get in like these like little campaigns or like, well, I'm going to bring something back, you know, or they have some project that, you know, is not going to happen, but they just trying to get like a GoFundMe. <laughs> or Ed and his wife are very stupid because we get, we're going to go both sides are very stupid and no one in the industry should deal with them because they thought for $35,000 they could create all of this. So it's either you're very stupid. Okay, I believe you. It could happen. I've seen it happen. Or you're a thief. One or the other. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch. And it wasn't at 30000 at this point. This is like I've watched it grow. And I've seen, I saw Ed before literally almost intimidating people. This is a fact. And remember this point, because you remember at this point, there's a woman, he's like, I can't believe none of you guys are uh, paying for, uh, like, my new, donating to my new show. This one is like, it really bothered me, and the, the, he was doing it all the time, like, if you go back and you read, like, all of Ed's stuff, he was aggressively mean trying to get money out of people, like, really intense, it was really dirty and greasy how much he was trying to, like, exploit every penny out of his fans. And like I say, he was at that great point with us 80s babies. We, we remember that one little point in history where, like, there was no the technology. And we remember going out and hanging out. So we will spend money and give money to get that feeling back because it's so precious to us. And more than any other generation, the only ones who can kind of relate are the 90s babies. Because they were just the beginning of it. We remember, the like, that real feeling of, like, going out and being a part of something. And Ed was promising to bring that back. Oh, it's coming. I'm going to create it all back for you. You can be a part of it. Just give me money, please, you know. And then at one point, and I can't find this GoFundMe, so someone please go look for it. He started a fucking other GoFundMe for a legal fund because much music, he said, was going to sue him. What do you mean they're going to sue you? You can't steal. You're at the sock. You're just going to steal music videos and steal, like, concepts of shows and stuff? Like, you can't do that. The whole world knows that. You know that. So... I believe he created that scenario because I can't talk too much, but I asked someone that works at Much Music about that. And I said, were you guys going to plan? They're like, no, we weren't suing him. We just weren't going to allow him to post the content on YouTube. I was like, uh, of course, like every single other person. He created that conspiracy because Ed, to me, if you go look at all the attention, and what he's done, he's very good at getting his name into the media and creating fake controversies off of Canadians, right? Off of their feelings and their emotions. And he started uh, a slush fund, legal fund for that, which just disappeared. I never know where that money went or where that account went. It's not up anymore. So if someone could find that. So he created that. Again, a fake fund because you weren't being sued. You're just not allowed to use stolen coffee. And I can't start the Fresh Prince of fucking Bel Air right now. You know, it's, what a delusion. Zach Morris can't just wake up and go, oh, I'm going to be create Saved by the Bell as on the show as the number one character. Like, we all know that, dummy. And so we created another fake conspiracy. None of these shows have come. Nothing's happened from his entire platform. He's got $30,000 now. He went on a Canadian tour. Although you say they weren't connected at, I've read that on articles. They were, though, because you made people believe, like, you were creating this entire new network and this whole new movement that they could be a part of. And of course, that's why a lot of them went to the show. They came hand in hand. Obviously, they saw you're not relevant. So the only way they saw you was online where you're saying all of this stuff. And that's why they went to the shows, right? You didn't create any of that. You didn't create anything. What you've done, <coughs> him, I think he's got over a head. He's a goofy looking guy. And just a tip, on your IMBD, take down the picture 
of you at like 30 years old. That's the creepiest stuff when like 50 year old men do that. Like, why do you have a picture of you when you're 30 years old on there? <clears throat> it's a creepy picture there too. But he has a beautiful wife. And I know she has like a YouTube show and not great numbers. I think they're a little deluded on how relevant that is. And he is like, I believe, like if you listen to him now, he, him and his wife are going to create this network in, at their house and going to have news coverage. So he, you totally did fraud, in my opinion. You create offered to do this entire thing that you couldn't do was a lie. And now you're creating a little studio and you've taken all this money to create a show with your wife about news and politics and nothing. Like, how does that work? You can't do that. Like, and I wouldn't say something like I said it unless, Ed, you were continually going on about politicians being unethical and, you know, and the government and businesses. And then I see you talking because I, I watch you. He'll put little, like, hints in there like he might try to run for politics. Well, you're a thief. Like, you're as bad as Justin Trudeau. So it's either that you're a thief right now, right? Or you didn't know. But you must know now that you can't do those things that you promised. It's impossible. And they're in the industry. So, like, to say, like, they didn't know, I, I, I can't believe that. Like, I just, I can't. I'm not in the industry. I just know a couple people who I just gossip. And I know, like, you couldn't financially create that. You knew you couldn't. You... I believe Ed and his wife, this is my opinion, got into a financial uh, situation. I do believe they both are very pompous and they believe that they're much more talented and bigger stars than what they are. And they started to go fund me. And I think the whole time they knew that wasn't going to happen and they thought they're going to create their own little like news show, like the Rebel Media or something like that. Like, he, they're very deluded. They're very scummy. Like they're like the Clintons. It's very, it's very weird. The more you look at the Ed the Sock and his wife, and how unethical what they actually did is, and how I think it's illegal. I'm pretty sure you committed like fraud, promising that taking money from people and saying you're going to deliver something. And he's actually changed on um, the Indiegogo. If you go back and you look, he took off like that. He couldn't do that stuff. Like there's no electric circus, and the things that he was offering are less and less and less. And he has, like, a couple shows with other fucking random, like, loser YouTubers like myself, like, acting like that. Well, obviously, they didn't donate money for that. That are all under construction. Like, everything's been under construction with Ed the Sock for over, like, a year and some now. So, I don't understand where that's going to. You're not creating an electric circus. Let's get that done. You can't do formats because you can't get the music videos. Okay, well, that's... 70% of the stuff that you actually do, that's what, like, if you had any appeal, it's going to be that. So what are you going to do? You, you're going to do more tours, promising people this network, the 80s babies and the early 90s babies, that you're going to bring back that feeling of nostalgia and life is going to be great again and we're going to go out and connect, which obviously we're not, to a network that's obviously never going to happen to build your wife a show, a better studio for your YouTube channel that's not really going to pop. So you probably, in your mind, are going to take a political run. We I don't know. It just seems very weird. I hope someone smarter than me looks into this, gives your opinion. Ed, you could definitely respond. And this is one thing I'll say about Ed the Sock. I, I'm almost positive I could have reached out to him. Um, I have his contact and said, hey, and asked him these questions. But... I like to do it raw and how I'm feeling and I don't want to be, sometimes you can say a nice word to me and I can fucking shiver like a little lady. I, I'm terrible like that. But so to me, look at this, like, could I look at you all right now and say, hey guys, I want you to give me $35,000. I'm going to the moon. I'm building a rocket ship. I'm going to the moon. And then in the end, I'm like, ah, uh, you know. I can't do that. Well, I don't even say that. I'm like, oh, uh, you know, I'm going to build my wife a kitchen now. But we're going to talk about the moon. Like, no, that, that, that doesn't work. Like, it's that's what you've done. It's a big scam. You're a big thief. I When I say, like, this is my opinion, it is my opinion, but I I know this. Like, I know from the bottom of my heart, like, you scammed these people. You promised all this stuff. You didn't give it. You stole $30,000. You went on tour. You probably made another $30,000 there. Right? 
for for who? Like these people invested in you to get something. Like it wasn't like they invested, gave you the money for you to live a good life and have a little YouTube channel with your big titty wife and have a great time. I get it. I want to do that too. I want to hang out with your wife and do that podcast. I'm telling you, but you still stole the money from everyone and you can't really get away with that. It's super un-Canadian. It's super unethical. And as, you know, the underground king of Ottawa and king of Ottawa, I had to say something. It's very, it's very disgusting. And if I know you're coming to Ottawa, so if you want, you can do a show right here. You can be my guest. We can talk about it in detail. But besides that, I'm going to... Because anyone I've showed this to, they say the same thing. It's like, yes, it seems like he's pulling a fraud. So I'm going to look into it a bit more. I'm going to report it, obviously, because I'm a Canadian, and you always talk about the ethics of all the Canadian politicians, and you talked about being a politician. So I'm obviously going to have to hold you at the same level as I'd hold my politicians to because you want to make that political run. And I'm going to report it. And I'm pretty sure you're going to have to give that money back because you went on a premise that you're going to create something that you, you can't and it's impossible. And it's either just, you're either very stupid and you still have to give the, you don't get to keep the money because you're stupid or you're a disgusting thief. And obviously you need to give the money back too and explain why you thought that was ethical to do that. Okay, I love you all. Hit that subscribe button, of course. Hit that little bell so you get a notification, even though you won't get the notification. And go tell Ed the Sock, fuck you. Do it for me. And look up the information and say, do I agree with what he's saying? Because if you don't, perfect. Please come come hit me on my social media, the service room on all platforms. Educate me. Ed the Sock, you can respond to educate me if you like. But I... 99.9% .9 sure unless you're a moron, you're going to come to the same conclusion and hopefully you're smarter than me and you can come to a more articulate way to express this and we can see how we can proceed to go further with this because it's either let's get Ed the soft charge, put him in jail or I'm wrong. Either either one, he's a, he's a fraud who stole from innocent Canadians, which you have to be held accountable for that or I'm wrong. But since it's been a year or some, nothing's been created. He has the money. And like I say, where did that like legal GoFundMe slush went that you created? I have never found that again. Where you, someone, if you know how to find that, because he said you, uh, Much Music was going to sue him. Because he was going to steal their contents like you and their concepts. Obviously, you knew you couldn't do that. You're both in the industry. And you created that legal fund. Where did that money go? Because I can't find that anymore. So... And I remember it had money in it too, because I remember going and looking at it, that just disappeared. And you made that up also. You made like you're being sued. Like it was just as a lot of like really scummy, disgusting stuff is uh, around at the sock if you actually look close. And you're a creepy guy, dude. I re really appreciate you for everything you did for Can for Canada and like you brought like light to us at a dark time and like entertainment. In Canada, and you made us relevant. Same with Much Music and all the DJs or VJs, whatever the fuck you call yourselves. But you're an old creepy dude, and you rob you rob Canadians. Like there's nothing else we can do. So God bless. I love you all. This guy's worse than the liberals.